Okay, we're going to isolate uh, three teeth. We're doing using a slit dam technique. This is a really good strategy. We primarily do this because it's a more secure way to do gentle wave. It's easier to get the platform to be really stable. But since we've been doing it and sealing the edges with cool dam, it's been uh, really a nice environment. It's easier to see. First off, it's easier to deal with interproximal decay while you're doing a root canal. She's got deep distal decay on here. Um, and in terms of your angulation during access, seeing a number of teeth there is also helpful. Okay, we're gonna start with the number six. Okay, so if we can switch cameras, I'm going to give you guys a, a, a little up. Could you move that way just for this part? Because we need to show this a little bit easier than you might be able to see it. If you look over there, you can see it really well. Um, how, how old are you? Okay. Our patient is 24 years old. God bless her. I'm sorry she needs a root canal, but doing root canals on young people is so nice because they still have pretty nice shape. It's not too constricted. We're looking at the, uh, this first molar, big distal decay there. We're going to take that out first. Um, I'll probably use some cool dam to create a temporary distal wall. Uh, the mesial canal doesn't look calcified. It's not huge though. Um, the palatal may require very little shaping, but I think we'll need to We'll have to custom dent to get the 1306 to length. Here's a view on the CT. Notice the difference in the decay appearance. And here's where I'm measuring the lengths of the, each of the canals. One of the great things about comb CT is it is dimensionally accurate. Here's the next set of images. This is a distal view. You want to take a shallow distal view of uh, the uh, upper, mo upper molar so you can turn that MB root a little bit sideways and get a sense of how wide it is. If you can see the two canals or even the MB1 canal only and it's off center, you have a second canal in there. This is a view of the mesobuccal root here. I'm going to tr turn it to you guys and I'll turn it back. It is really broad there's a really good chance we're going to have an, a third MB canal in there. Could be just a weird uh, isthmus, but that's kind of the exciting thing for me. And so what I'm showing here is length of mesial buccal canal, MB1 canal, length of the MB2 canal, and if there is an MB3, where it takes off. It's about 13 millimeters from the reference point. So when I get that uh, MB1 and 2 cleaned out, I'm going to take a bent file and move get my stop set at 13 and see if I can find a little isthmus to get caught into maybe thread an instrument up there. And then here is the distal buckle length. So it looks like in the buckle view it's 19.38 in the uh, mesial view which is the longest view because I reference across the tooth to the palatal cusp tip it's 20.59. This one is probably actually a tiny bit short, so we're going to go with 21 millimeters as the estimate for the distal buckle. Also, I'm measuring the distance from the MB1 orifice to where the MB2 is. That way I measure over with my uh, perio probe and I just start looking right there. Any questions about the case? Okay. All right, what's so great about heads up? I can put this over her torso and cut this access almost with no mirror. Can I see the other view, the tight view? Okay. Yeah, we got to turn this page a little bit so 
I can see past your feet. There we go. Perfect. All right, I've got a replacement uh, light source here, so it could be a little brighter. Sorry about that. Curious Denton, not really a different color. Uh, I have a mirror handle that has a little and a big mirror on it, super handy. You find uh, sometimes that there's not enough room to use the uh, standard size mirror. Okay, so I've got a pretty nice mirror view here. Let's go ahead and Take a little bit more of this out. Okay, I'm going to turn my RPM down to one quarter. Let's see, and turn the So, slow speed, six round. Is my mic on? Okay. Not right now, but I'll need to be. All right, still curious. Do you have fairies in the crater? I do. Okay. That's hard. Excellent. Okay, we still have it. It's right along the enamel, detonant enamel junction.
Okay, let's put some Carrie's indicator in here. I hate this stuff. It gets everywhere. Like, this is enough to dye the state of New York. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's looking pretty good. A little bit over the corner here. Tiny bit there. Okay, we're almost done with this part. I'm going to do a temporary distal wall and I'm going to fill the whole interproximal space with uh, cool dam. I actually want to support it. We're going to rub the distal, uh, distally adjacent tooth with alcohol so it sticks really nicely there because we're going to break it out when we get done. We, all, we want to uh, mono, mono block uh, build up. Sorry, Jesse. I'm sorry to get your lip there. Okay. Alcohol, cotton, pellet. I'm going to use one of my favorite toys, plasma or curing light. How many people here have one? Okay, you're bonded guys. How much time do you have in your life to give away to waiting 20 seconds instead of five? <laughs> if this costs 10 grand, it'd make you it'd pay for itself in a month. Okay, not a month. It's an overstatement, but you know, I'm getting a little dramatic there, but. I, I don't get it. I'm not a, a, a uh, that's not my primary sport, but um, since I've got into post endodontic restorative technology, I'm doing the air abrasion, which is fantastic. And this is a light by uh, Denmap. Good for now. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, uh, blue goo. No, no. So when we started building these platforms for Gentle Wave. Uh, we're trying, we're doing, you know, glass ionomer, the things that seal the best, they all blew out. Composites and glass ionomers never realize that it takes hours for that stuff to fully cure. So um, what, what really worked, the best of everything was this temporary blue goo. They call it sound seal, it's, it's uh, same as cool dam. We're going to go to a number four round burr. We're going to now make conventional access. I'm going to cheat it to the distal because I, we already have two structure missing there. But I can't do a root canal in the mesial buckle too from that opening. I'm going to start right here in the middle, to the central fossa. I need full RPM obviously. If you want to know where the distal buckle line angle is, okay, this is shot. Yeah, hampies. Do we have another attachment? Yes. Did we open the 
With the long birds we have in Indo, chucks don't last as long. It's still worth it. We gotta have we gotta have a length to see what we're doing. Can you watch that for me? Do I have a visual clue? I really don't. So in my little list of rules, I usually don't pick up an explorer until I have a visual clue. That isn't one. But I'm through the enamel, so I'm going to go to a taper diamond burr for the final entry because it's more conservative. If I'm a little off, it won't make as big a ding. There we are, we're in the pulp chamber. Once I drop in, I don't want anything but a guided burr. It's too hard, too difficult. I'm gonna use this with water spray because it will keep this little tiny pilot tip. This is an LA Access burr. Let me just take a look and see what we have there. Okay, nice exposure. I wanna keep this cool so that little tip lasts longer. I'm going to just establish it this to the wall first. Oh, nice. Okay. There's the palatal. It's actually at a kind of a distal lingual at angle. Let's put this LA diamond in there and see if it drops in. Really deep pulp chamber. Tordant like. Pulp tissue right there. When I get the palatal open enough, actually we could probably broach it now. Let's do my little favorite broaching trick. It's always hard to know what size brooch to use unless you just use a 25 and put a big series bend in it. Now that will sweep around any geometry of canal, and that is the object of this thing. And you encourage it to drop deeper in as you're rotating because that helps it roll the pulp up in it. And I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Oh, nice. Okay. analogies ice fishing <laughs> okay I love showing patients that when they're not premedicated um, and uh, when I explain to them that's what made them so miserable by the way I think I broached a canal portion apical uh, side besides this this right here is another canal <coughs> this is the palatal and if you look at this a lot of times you'll see even lateral canals yeah, that's, 
that is, I think, this really strange hint of a canal bifurcating off of there. Almost, I thought, almost like an MB3. So we'll find out more about it. Oh, can we save this? <laughs> well, we're doing research on it, on uh, irrigation, so uh, we're using prosciutto now. No artificial preservatives, um, and it's gluten-free. Uh, but it's not pulp tissue, so our second round after we get our sea legs with the uh, different ways of looking at this, we're going to start trapping pulps inside there in that isthmus space. I think that'll be fun. <laughs> it's just kind of weird, but it'll be fun, yeah. Uh, here is a regular DG-16. No indication of an MB-2. MB-1, I can catch it a little bit, but that's not even that great. Watch what happens when we put a little tiny bend on the end of that guy. All right, I've got that thing in there two millimeters. I can clear this pulp tissue out from under this wall. I mean, it's going to be gone when I finish the access, but that's kind of fun. That's the pulp tissue coming out of the MB2, I think. Yeah, give me a wash, please. My mesial wall is short, so let's get that tuned up. It's so irritating to be unparfocal. As I tip these canals up, as they enter the pulp chamber, we should have a better straight shot into them. Here's the palatal. I've got a little natural ledge there, so I'm going to drop the LA diamond in there. Let's see what it looks like in the mesial buckle. Uh, MB1, we've got a pretty nice line angle dropping in there. Let's see if we have a hint of MB2. It's a little early, but it's a young tooth. Really young patient, right? Oh, cool. So we have a, a little isthmus coming right off of there. That's where we're going to look. We're going to start cutting that back with ultrasonic. Okay, this is a buck one tip. Getting close here. All right. Doing the videography is half the challenge of these demos. Here we go. But I like them. So I'm going to cut along a trough along here between the light axial denton and the dark. Let's get a little different view here. Mirror. Get the big mirror back there. There we go. You want to use these Zerk mirrors. They are super bright. It's one thing to apply. Look out. Having a bigger mirror there put more light in there, didn't it? Yeah. But it's one thing to throw light in, it's, it's another thing to get it reflected back. Um, another thing I saw in that uh, axial view was this MB2 is not in line with the MB1 and the palatal. It's not along here. It's over, it's over here. 
it's, it's like at this angle. It's going to be two millimeters ahead of the palatal root. So I'm going to trough, pull that back. I'm doing it at a mesial apical angle. Now we're going to see how the, uh, the buck two can help us out. This is the flat pulp chamber floor sander. It's a truncate form. I'm going to use it to cut back underneath this mesial marginal ridge. And when you flatten that dentin out, it really, um, light, it really illuminates the anatomy on the floor. MB1, uh, I think I have a little bit of a tick right there. Let's see the distal buckle. We haven't entered that yet. As I said, the distal buckle is going to be found right under the central fossa. That's the distal buckle. So I'm going to alternate between ultrasonic and guided high speed burr. You okay? Did you feel that a little bit? Maybe uh, one. And as I measured, it was three millimeters away. in this direction. So that's going to put it right about here. I have tug back a very possibly could be part of the MB2. In fact, let's see if we can put a little file on it. Hmm? Yeah, sure. Do you have the... So I'm going to use the uh, Kerr's Traverse Orifice Widener here. Let's see if it'll go in the distal buckle. I think we need to get a different angle of attack there. Here's the MB1. I think I'm ready yet, but let's give it a try. No, not yet. Okay. Can I have a 13? Uh, actually, let me do a little bit more ultrasonic work here on the distal buckle. I've got to get this path to the distal buckle smoothed out. The path to the MB1 looks good. That gives me a good jumping off point for finding the isthmus, which I think is underneath here. Let's just cut this back a little bit. We are uh, viewing this through a, an antique. It's like a 1950s <laughs> pro magnet before the pro ergo. 
I got off of eBay for 7,500 bucks. Osman's got these little electric brakes. And MB2 canals come into the pulp chamber sometimes at almost 90 degrees. That's why we're looking underneath. Yeah, see this is a whole isthmus here. Not probably a canal. Sometimes if I can't find an MB2 I know is there, I can do the first minute and a half of gentle wave and it'll help me out. And uh, she's holding the uh, EDTA because she knows that's what I need next. We're going to use that and clear the, the dent of the smear layer. We'll see everything more clearly. All right, that's the first view. Check this out. Okay, that looks so totally different. I can see exactly where the isthmus is. Isn't that cool? That's what the smeared layer does. I didn't even real I didn't realize that for until like half a decade ago. It's ridiculous. But that is just super straightforward. There it is. This is currently the palvo extent of it. That's not too far past th uh, short of three millimeters. But regardless, this is where I'm going to trough. I know exactly where the isthmus is. If I know where the isthmus is, I know where the center of the root is. It's not exactly in the center, so I'm going to keep it small. But I'm going to make sure that I have a mesial apical direction. Because these canals in the MB2 come down, and that MB2 root actually has more of a hump coming into the crown. It, it looks like that because the canal curves and almost comes in, as I said, 90 degrees. I can confidently take an ultrasonic tip a long ways up an MB root if I have a good isthmus to look for. So I'm going to do this at first with the buck one. I just put this in there first. Okay, see the little white dot? That's the MB2. If you use sharp tip cutting devices for ultrasonics, you'll make these little dings and you won't know if it's a canal orifice or a ding. Yeah, look at that. I got great tug back there. Remember, MB2s can be more of an, a fin than, an, than actually a canal. I need to unroof this just a little bit more. Becoming more apparent. And I'm cutting further to the pallet because of the breadth of the MB root as seen on the CT. Let's put this good stuff in there. 17% aqueous EDTA. All right, that's about as cool as it's going to look. It has, even has a little curve to it. That's pretty classic. 
Now, whether I can get a file into there or not, that's a whole different thing. Okay, let's uh, use uh, 13.06. So I'm going to use a 13.06 traverse file to see if I can get in the orifice. Let's just measure that distance there. All right, that's not too far off. Okay. It's going in, but not very far. Can I be short 15K file? Okay, this might be like the tooth you're going to see later with a cervical impediment. Hold this. What am I looking for right now? My focus when I activate an instrument is, is it moving into the root canal system? If it's not, I need to get it out of there. That's not in the right place. Okay. Yeah, it's not staying where we put it. Let me use some ultrasonics. I think we need to get that prepped a little bit better. Yeah. I, I, it's, my favorite is not hand files to do that. It's rotaries, but I think I've got a bit of an impediment there. We're still on track. Remember what I said earlier about you don't want too sharp of an explorer, otherwise you'll get tugged back everywhere. You want it just to fit in that orifice. Cutting MB2 groove is super helpful. The worst canal we're going to treat in upper molar is the only one without a line angle dropping your files perfectly in. And if you have to bend file tips on an 08 file and get in an orifice with some lubricant in place, uh, it's going to be a challenge. You're going to be lucky to make that happen. And I've had cases like this that gave me tug back I never got a file into. 
That's when you're really happy to have multisonic irrigation. I should start being able to get a, a stick with a straight explorer. Put some EDTA in here. I don't know why it's looking purple. Must be the low light condition. I had my xenon light go out, so we've got a silver halide here. Let me hold that. Let's see if we can get a 15 in there again. And yeah, I'm going to give up looking for this in just a little while. Oh, nice. I just felt it drop in there. I think I've got a, a cervical impediment, if I'm not mistaken. This should go in the canal unless there's an impediment. It looks like it's getting caught in there. It's not advancing much. Let's see what it looks like from here. Okay, we're in the right spot. I think I've got an impediment. Let's put a bend on this little guy and see what happens. Okay, end of bender plier. Thumb rest, clamp, jaw, bending anvil. We're going to bend just the very tip of this little guy. That's all it takes. The very tip of the file is the only part that needs to be bent because the rest of the file will follow it. Um, if this was deeper in the tooth, I would definitely be putting a stop with a directional marker on it here, but this is cervical, so I'm not really trying to map my way around an impediment. Okay. Apically. This one I know is going to have a curve to the distal as soon as I get past this little mesial wee wah. That's a good sign. Let's try the 1306. So um, I'm going to look for this at the start of the procedure. If I can't find it, we're going to go ahead and treat the other canals because I know that after the hypochlorite and EDTA are in there, it's going to become a little easier path. Yeah, I've got, ah, uh, actually it just cut. Oh, that's so good. All right, yay. I don't want to think about an MB3 right now, but <laughs> I know. It's just a little dispiriting at times, but it's so fun when you find them. It's like taking broken files out. Okay, it's, it's advancing very slowly, but it is. And it's hanging up. Look at the flutes. 
The flutes are full of debris, about a, a millimeter and a half short of the tip. So the tip is still passive, it's not cutting. That's great, that's why this rotary uh, traverse works so well. Okay, I've got enough of that done that I'm gonna come back in and finish my access. So he said, access and negotiation are a bit interleaved when the canal is smaller. Okay, this is developing that mesial groove and it's gonna be aiming towards the palatal. That's because, let me show you. The MB roots look like this. Here's the MB1 file, here's the MB2 file. It's out, gonna hang out over the paddle, so you might as well cut it there. All right, that's got a good start to it. I'm gonna turn this RPM down, hyperextend the LA Diamond. That's why my chucks are so <laughs> useless. And get that little groove cut. In the case we had uh, a couple of weeks ago with the or orifice branching off, literally off the palatal for the MB2, this, uh, this groove that I'm showing you it was absolutely critical. It would have been impossible to treat that thing. Okay, so here we go. I've got a little groove here. It drops exactly in. I'm ready to go. Here's my MB. Cool. Let's see the palatal. I still got a bump there. I never went, I never got that taken out. I'm just gonna drop that in there. Uh, we don't have anything going on the DB yet. Let's see if we can get a file on that. First, let me tune the paddle. This is not an end cutting burr, but it will side cut. You can smooth with it really nicely. Here's the paddle smoothing. Yeah, that's too slow. is at a wicked angle. Okay, let's see if we can get a start in the DB. Open, please, just a little bit. Turn to the right. There we go. How are you doing, Jess? You okay? Great. Turn more. Thank you. That really helps in distal buccal canals. It's such an odd angle otherwise. And this canal is going to point towards the palatal orifice. So three canals out of four are referenced by the palatal. There we go. Okay, I just want to do that so I can touch it with the LA Diamond and finish, finish, finish. And I know I'm a little old lady about this, but um, when I don't get this thing perfect, the rest of my experience in the, in the endo is not that much fun. If you have to poke three times to get everything in the orifice, you, you need a three single root tooth. You don't have enough time to do more. Okay, MB canal. Orifice is, uh, line angle is good. Mesial buckle two groove. Palatal, distal buckle. The distal buckle still bugs. So ultrasonic's gonna finish it and we're gonna move on.
All right. So let's put lube in. We're going to put the, the ground lead in and start doing some rotary negotiation. In these small canals, we may only put a 1306 to length and be done. We'll find out. Usually I will get a 1306 to length, do the gentle wave, and then gauge it and find out what we have. And finish it, put a little EDT in the canal and, and finish it. Let's go ahead and do the distal buckle canal first. Hmm? Can I keep the 1306? Oh, yeah. Can you do your new thing? Okay. So if you uh, assign your assistant the job of deciding when a new file hap is brought in, they don't think $10, $10, $10. They think, hey, that file's bent. We shouldn't use that. <laughs> okay, let's see if the apex locator is going to start the file. I love it when it does that. There we go. Look at it. It's so cool. And it stops. So I'm going to clean it. Take a look at the flutes. No deranged flutes. Put it back in. Such a great combination with rotary negotiation and this handpiece. Uh, it's stopping when I take it out, and then when I put it in, it's starting up again. And there's my length. How great was that? And it also, you can, it has an apex locator lead you can use without the handpiece if you're using a hand file in the middle of this. So let's say I met an impediment. Now I'm going to put a bent file in there. I, I don't have to change anything. I just put the handpiece aside and use this little dude. It's got a little uh, thin V shape on the end. It's great for moving files. If you're using it on a file while it's operating, you're going to have way more room than you will when you use those, what I really don't care for. Uh, I'm going to pull that out. The little uh, electronic test leads. The reason that you get those is because they make a billion a year for the electronics industry and they call, cost three cents. These cost more, but they're better. So, um, length in the distal buckle canal. That's 21 millimeters. Uh, palatal cuss tip. Let's do the MB1. So what did I say it was? 21. Okay, what do we estimate? We estimated 19, I know. We estimated 21. So my, uh, my CT measurement was dead on, exactly on. That's very cool. MB1. You wipe that off mm -hmm. in camera. Okay, still looking good. As you get closer to length, it's going to pro progress slower. But I'm getting a lot of resistance there. It's always smart to just check it out with a hand file if you're not sure what's going on there. Here's where the, that separate apex locator lead will be helpful. He's going to hold the handpiece so I can look at the menu on it. It says I'm slightly long. That's really great news. So let's back up until it says I'm right there. OK. Um, this is the MB1, but I think I might, as it's rare, but I might want to reference it by the to cuss tip. Yeah, it wants to be over here. The closer you can get your reference point to where the file naturally wants to go, the better off you are. Here's length in the 
MB1 Office 08K file. It's at 21. She's going to set a, a 10 and a 15 at 21. Yeah, that's a, that's a small terminal diameter. I love that. Okay, let's see if 1306 will get there now. There we are. That's my length. This is a strange, you know what, we're going <laughs> to, I don't know if I've ever done this, we're going to reference this, it, the, the axis cavity is distalized by the distal buccal cusp tip. This is the MB1. This is the second measurement, was that 21 millimeter for the MB1? The last measurement. Hmm? The last measurement. Yes, but this one is saying 20. Let's put a 15K file in there measured at 20. Just a buckle cuss tip. So I'm going to find out if it's, uh, you know what, I might have had it at that length at 21 for the off the paddle cuss tip. That's what happened. Okay, I changed. So we're going to take the last one I got, which was off the distal buckle. Hold that, please. We are exactly there. No, no, wait. All right, I'm changing the reference point again. I'm sorry. Mesa buckle one by the pal to cuss tip is 20 and a half millimeters. Okay, MB1's good. Let's, can I have a new one? I'm gonna go on the MB2, feel a little insecure, <laughs> as I should. Um, let me put, slip a little 06 file in there. I wanna see what it feels like. I'm saving the easiest for last. Here's that little musical groove. There's the distal buccal canal. There's a little tiny natural impediment that just clicked past. When I have an apex locate, I can always check at all times, am I there yet? And I'm not even close. I've helped a lot of people learn how to use apex locators. Uh, if you get squirrely readings, don't worry about it. All you need to do is get a, 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 a bigger file. Usually that is because if you don't have hypochlorite in there, it's because the file is smaller than the terminus of the canal. I don't know why exactly, but that seems to set it off. Okay, not even close there. So I'm going to do serial step back negotiation. I'm going to put a six in there. Here's an eight. This is fitting about a millimeter short of where the six fit. Here's a 10. Aren't we glad we got a measly little groove? Because it takes a little bit of fuss to get these files to do what they need to do. Let's even put a 15 in there, not to go to that same length, but to Great, more coronal shape. Look how far back it stepped. It stepped back four millimeters. So that means I've got a parallel spot in the canal and it's in the April third. Be careful about the 15 and balance force technique. Let's use a 20 in there and see if we can ease things up a bit. Balance force technique, open real wide for me. 
Balanced force technique is you're going to push the file in the canal, thread it less than a quarter of a turn in, and then hold it in the canal as you rotate 360 degrees in a counterclockwise direction. Thread it, cut. Thread it, cut. You'll feel a little click click in there because when you thread it in, you're tapping a little screw thread. When you hold it in place and counter rotate it, the little blade snap past that groove, and that's what you feel is a little click. So that's good. I'm meeting an impediment there. Let's see if we're close. Nope. All right. I'm going to go to an 08K file, bend the tip of that. Now it's going to make a difference that I know where the bend is, so I'm going to bend it towards that little notch. It's not that easy to see the direction, but you need to have this accurately depicted. Okay, what's our length? 20 Where and change? For the D. MB2? MB2, our estimate's 19 and a half. Okay. It's not that easy to get the bent file in there. Let's see if it's straightened out. It kind of has. Did I ding it? Yeah. I need another one. Can't be more than 90 degrees. Won't go in the canal. Okay, good. There's the orifice. I'm going to flip it around to go to the distal. There we go. A little tug back, that's a good thing. I'm trying a little different direction. There, it's t not going as deep. I turn it, and down over here, it will translate a bit further in. It just clicked. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. A lot. So I may have buckled the tip of the file. Doesn't matter. But a lot of times, just randomly moving the file around in there will cause the tip to just randomly bounce, bounce past the impediment. See that little mark right there? I'm, I'm comparing that to the uh, distal lingual cusp because it's in the sight line. Okay, that's about all I can do with this guy. Let's bend up. There we go. There's that little click. Check apex locator. Not close. Okay, I'm going to throw that guy away. Let's see what we can do with an 06. Oh, nice, I have tug back. That's great. This thing is just, I think, super tiny. It's sticky.
Every now and then try a straight file. You may have needed to bend a file before, but it, a straight file sometimes will get you there. I don't know why, better. I'm getting a little tug back on this. Let's put a rotary file in there. Mm -hmm. Remember, we probably have the MB1 and DB done. This is the new 1306, correct? Yes. No, I'm okay. This just made progress that I couldn't make with a hand file. And this will not be a new hole in the root. Let me try it on six. estimate in this canal was 19. 19 and a half. Okay, so here's 18, 19 and a half. The stop is at a half. Any signal there? No. None. Okay. Let's do the paddle. I'm tired of this canal. Uh, I'll take an 1806. I actually hate it. <laughs> With a passion unknown to modern endodontics. Yep. Palatal estimate's 20. Here's the 1806 Traverse. There we go. So there's lots of shape in there. Let's gauge this thing, find out what we need to finish it with. Length in that canal is? Twenty. What was our estimate? Okay, not so bad. Let's gauge and I'll put a finishing file in. So, let's see, we still have lube in there? Uh, almost carried it all out. Let's put a little bit more in. Here's a 20. Nice. It might be really tiny there. Here's a 30. Okay. Let's put a 30 away to let in there at 20. 30 away to 20. After this, I may need to put a 40 away in. We'll find out. Usually, when you gauge like that, it will turn. Why is it backing up? Can you fit it oh, okay, I'm on the wrong torque limit. Too low a torque limit. Here we go. There we go. Right at length. That's, that's a, okay. File's looking good. Let's. Rinse with EDTA solution, since I'm just almost certainly going to be done with this one. We'll irrigate them all. And I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, now that I'm probably within a millimeter, millimeter and a half of the MB2, I might do gentle wave now. And then uh, it, it may give us a better chance of getting length. So going, oh, so gauging. There's a 20 through. There's a 30 at length. The 40 should step back a millimeter, half millimeter less than the width of the stop, and it does. So we have the shape we thought we had, and we have a taper that goes there. Last act with a file in this canal, getting patent. Yeah. 
Is this a 19 and a half? Mm, the 06? So. Yeah. Okay. Here's the MB2. Oh, nice. Anytime you get tug back on this file when you're doing this, that's a good thing. Now it's not tug backy, so I'm back to an impediment. Let's use an 8 and a 10 and, s and then bend a 6 and see what we can do with it. How long do you find MVPs? Uh, they're there 70% of the time. Half of those have their own April portal of exit. So if you find them less than 50% of the time, you should look a little harder. If you find them 70% of the time, you might be perfed a little more often than you need to be. Here's a bent file, MB2. Oh. Okay, why am I looking in the distal first? Because more posterior teeth have distal curves than any other direction. Now currently, I'm just getting a little catch from a bent file moving in the mesial lingual direction. Let's try around to the distal. Yeah, I got nothing there. Let's put a bent six in. Open real wide. Thank you. This is a hmm? Is it out? No, it's inside our card. Oh. Let's move it back a little bit. There you go. Things are going really well here. Open real wide. Great. Perfect. All right. Xanax does Xanax does grant you more interclusal distance. <laughs> God bless it. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. Okay. You're looking at the right thing. Awesome. Let's just check it with an apex locator because I always like to know where I am or I'm not. Oh, I'm not too far. I might be there. In fact, our estimated length is looking pretty accurate. So, as I told you before, um, somewhere between 10 and 20 percent of the people who watch the live demo on the upper first molar, the, what they learn is they don't want to do upper first molars. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally fine, you guys. Let's not be heroes here, all right? There's some poor endodontist that will do that upper molar for you if you don't want to. We don't get any choice. And I'll teach you how to treat any tooth you want. I'm just saying, when you're in the discovery phase of a new technique, let's, let's choose nice, decent cases. Getting a finger rest, making sure I don't pull too far back because then to pull all the way out. God, I think I'm really close. Can I try a straight? Oh, oh six. <laughs> Why do I try a straight one every now and then? I was in a canal. This is before I learned that I don't have to bend all my files. <coughs> I was taught to bend all my files no matter what. So that's, there is an impediment there. And uh, of course I'm doing a root canal with one of my good friends. 
I cannot get to the end of an MB root canal of a lower molar to save my soul. And um, as I tell, I finally give up, and I tell um, my assistant that we're going to obturate. I'm telling my patient, well, God, I'm really sorry to tell you, we might need to do atrial surgery on it. And while I'm waiting for her to get the uh, pluggers, see, I didn't bend it enough there. I've got an impediment all the way around the circumference right there. I'm bored. I'm thinking like, what did I try? This curve, this curve, this curve, this direction, all these different directions. And I went through it. I realized there's only one thing I hadn't tried was a straight file. So I'm bored. I got nothing to do. I put a straight file and it went straight to the end of the canal. This canal had a fin all the way down its length. Every bent file hung up in it. And it wasn't until I got a, an unbent file in there that it would go to length. We're making awesome progress here. We're almost done with the instrumentation. Okay, nice. The trick is to get it <coughs> to the end of the canal where the impediment is with the bend still on it, right? Because you don't want to straighten it out. Okay, there you go. I go a little distal buckle and it dropped a half millimeter. And if you have an S curve, you have to go one direction and then the opposite direction to get past that. Actually, that's maybe what's going on here because I think I got a little bit of tug back no. All right. And you want to try a, a little bit bigger file every now and then because the rigidity of the instrument may hold its shape and allow you to get past the impediment. Very likely the impediment is going to be cleaned after gentle wave. And so um, we'll just fill it with bioceramics even if we can't fit a cone in it. Okay, so there is to the distal buckle. Yeah. And this kind of a case may also be a good case for a carrier fill. Okay, we're let's let's go ahead and build a platform. Part of my problem is the file is getting straightened out before it gets there. All right. That's it for now. Yep. Okay. Again, scrubbing with alcohol is really important. We also want to extend this stage onto adjacent teeth so it's more stable. Nope. We found that, that little tiny smear layer, slime layer that uh, occludes our view of the pulp chamber floor is, is also interfering with our cool down seal.
first. I'm going to show you uh, filling up, loading the, they call it the uh, platform former. Here, we'll put the last clues of load on. And then it's really important to not make sure you don't put this thing too far in. You want to have a nice cushion there. Click this little guy off, finish curing that. It's on 10 seconds now. Okay, so we're going to take that off with a perio probe. This usually works pretty well. Actually, we need a little higher RPM. 30 weight work better? Mm -hmm. There we go. Different file size. Apparently, you only spin a sponge out with a 308. That's a trick my friend Ryan Facer taught me. He uses a 4004, I think. Okay. Water spray on. Uh, you need a minimum of two and a half millimeters, which is a very conservative molar axis prep. And what you want is you want a very clean interface between the material and the tooth. Look for voids because those will disturb things. We, we're looking really good all the way around here. I need to just touch it on the mesial and we're good to go. Actually on the distal. Now I need to pick a platform height, or a ceiling cap height. It wants to be a millimeter above the pulp chamber floor. So if I measure from there to here and it's 12, I need a 10. I used to use 7s and 8s because I would squeeze that little guy down too far. Now that I'm giving a little bit more cushion there, it's more like 8s, uh, 9s, or 10s. Here's the, uh, the gentle wave tip. You want to be certain that it is fully clicked. See how it's like not quite in there? That's a problem. If that doesn't go on there, sometimes putting with opposing thumbs. Now we're looking pretty good there. Let's see if it looks good on this side. Yes. Okay. We're going to start with a vacuum test. How are you doing okay, Jesse? Great. 
we're three quarters of the way through. I don't know if that makes you happy or sad, <laughs> but <laughs> usually people like to hear they're getting closer to the end than the beginning. Okay, so I've got to make sure I have a good seal on here. Start it up, and what I want to see is, I want to see no air bubbles. Well, almost no air bubbles. That looks good. If there's a lot of air bubbles, that means I have an air leak. If I have an air leak, I'm not getting a negative pressure inside there. And that will, um, do you guys have a, Chris, do you have a video camera? Can you, give me your, can you take a little movie foot? footage of this. I want to show what this fog looks like. Right now this is distilled water. And yeah, this is pretty trippy to see this. Let's have him bring the camera in. I've always wanted to put this in my lecture. Don't want to get her wet. Oh, you're going to do it here? Okay. You got to aim it over here. Zoom it in for me a little bit. All right, here we go. Are we in focus there? Look at what it's doing. It's shooting the solutions backward. That's what's creating the vacuum in there. So the first minute and a half is, is a distilled water. You don't want to do that with the hypochlorite cycle. That we'd all have funny colored clothing afterwards. You have no idea how many uh, pair of pants I have with black magic marker. <laughs> That's why I wear black uh, jeans, because magic marker takes care of that, real, no problem. Okay, so we're 10% uh, ten, ten ten checked on the vacuum. So that I wish they had a movie channel on the little menu there because usually I make her do this. Fifty percent checked. Now I'm actually going to run an extra cycle with a second hand piece because I'm worried about that MD root. Some of the research I did said that the five minute cycle. When it's extended to seven and a half minutes, we'll take care of things that didn't get done in the first cycle. That would be weird teeth, C-shaped molars. There would be teeth that are really broad that have a rich uh, anastomosis of canals. Where now we're doing hypochlorite. So this is the five minute cycle. After that, there's gonna be a 30 second rinse. Then there will be a two, two minute EDTA cycle because Sonendo um, degasses the uh, fluids and because of the sonic energy they transmit from that little projection into the pulp chamber, they're, they're able to be really effective at cleaning at half strength hypochlorite. So we're using 3%, 3.1%. It is not heated as far as I know. So you saw the, the, the fluids come down that little pipe and then they're shot back in the opposite direction because they're, they hit a concave surface. That creates a vacuum inside there from the Venturi effect, but also when it's hitting that little incident plate and reversing, it's, it's, uh, it's ringing that thing like a bell. So that little thing is vibrating, creating multisonic energy that translates really well down hard dented surfaces. And actually, when you see this in a clear plastic replica, you see things at the end of the root canal moving first because there's an amplification of the sound as you get down to the narrower portions. So that's pretty trippy. It cleans apically first. The last thing you'll see is the pulp come out of the cervical half of the canal if there's still one in there. Are you okay? Are you having pain? Uh, it's my jaw. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> If you go a, a long uh, a bit before you're doing this and you lose a little bit of the anesthesia, they could feel something. All it means is they're not numb. You just get more anesthesia. I've done open apex cases. I've done cases under the sinus. What you don't want to do is you want to be under the sinus and get patent into the airspace because then air leaks in through the root end. That's the, really the only thing you got to worry about. 
using a 1306 with an apex locator is a great way to do that. Uh, huh? Oh, you know what? Close down a little bit. You don't need to hold open as wide for this. Uh, actually, more than that. <laughs> okay, so there's that little tuning fork, right? All right, back to work. See the little red in there? There's a little heme, because when this draws a vacuum, it pulls periple tissue fluids into the pulp chamber. If you have a patient with swelling, it will sometimes remove the whole swelling by pulling it up through the root ends. <laughs> it's pretty dramatic. On occasion, it will bang a broken file out. You can't depend on it, but it's really fun when it happens. Are we getting anything back here? I've been using it for about a year and a half. And uh, it's really been an interesting experience. Pardon? This is by a, a medical technology company that found out that uh, a third of the healthcare dollars are spent on cardiac things. A third is spent on cancer, and a third is spent on dental decay. So it just went where the money was. <laughs> These guys used 50 million bucks up before they got the whole thing ready to go. They've had multiple financing through BlackRock, which is one of the largest investment firms in the world. And um, they're making it happen. It's a tough sell to convince somebody they need an $80,000 machine to clean a root canal. And you can do it if you have more time without. Okay, two and a half minutes. We're halfway through the first cycle. What well, oh, sorry, sweet. What I was using before that was more time. So irrigating, freshening the solutions, uh, activating at the start with ultrasonics to break everything loose, and then letting the patient sit there. She'd come back in every five or 10 minutes and freshen it. And we, if you give it the 40 minutes, a lot, you'll be surprised at what gets done. Pardon? I can't hear you. Oh. Yeah. Mm, we're get, not getting any air. I think I just tipped it. Huh? That looks like a, a break. Uh, let's try it. You're probably right. Let's see if we don't have to do anything to it. That'd be nice. Yeah, you're right. We got a leak. Can you just add more? Yeah, I think so. Make a new one. We're going to have to do it, use it for another cycle yet. Go ahead and grab that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's typical. It used to be scary because that usually meant something really bad happened. It's not the case here. If you put a vacuum on all those little uh, cap capillaries at the end, they're all just all opening up. So we lost the distal. Okay. Let's block that up first. Let's uh, rub it, scrub it with alcohol. <coughs> so we got halfway through the first cycle. This is like a rug doctor. What? Like a rug doctor? <laughs> what do rug doctors do? <laughs> oh, the, oh, right. Got it. The carbically. That's funny. Yeah, I don't think it costs 80K, but. <laughs> yeah. Let's put the um, 
stuff in the distal first, and then we'll get the rest of it ready to go. Okay. Can we dry the distal? I want to put a little layer there, just keep the moisture out. No, I need uh, this cool down suction. Okay, cool down. suction that <laughs> up into the it's like an irreversible problem Open. Might need another. You would think that uh, multiple walls missing, open please, would be uh, really impossible, but it's, it's not that bad. This cool down sticks so well if you do the alcohol rub. What are you doing? You have to scan on your skin. What? You have to scan on your Why? Or do you want to use the camera? No, we're going to finish that. Oh, the same height? We can change the, that, okay. Cardi. Let's put the bite block in. Sponge. Over here. Okay. 
because um, it, you, it has to have a really good escape path to create the vacuum. If there's impedance, and in fact, if you have a pulp chamber roof remaining, you have to kind of unroof it. Except right here. Same one will work. <coughs> yeah. It's helpful if you get a, a, a choke up on a little bit, get a, a, a fist hold, because you're going to be in. The, you need to be in the same place for a long time. Three minutes and ten seconds. Are you doing okay, Jesse? Mm -hmm. right. bottom button. Okay, three minutes, 44 seconds. We've got a minute and 15 seconds left of this cycle. Four minutes. Do you have the other uh, mower, GI? I have it. Yeah. Any questions? Files in the mesial buckles, canals. I had a 1306 in the mesial buckle one, and in the distal buckle, and I have an 06K file. I don't know. I think I'm within a millimeter in the MB2. Is that in the back there? Not that easy to hold it exactly. The, the molar has a little tiny uh, bumper pad there. The anterior premolar one is a lot easier to use. It has a big fat cushion on it. Okay, we're getting to five minutes. That's the end of the hypochlorite cycle. It's going to rinse for 30 seconds and then do a two minute EDTA. Fifteen seconds. So this is the problem with things like endovac, which are really good and which really speed up the process, but you have to hang on to it the whole time. And then you have four canals, so you take a 40-minute procedure to a five-minute procedure, you have to hang on to it now instead of just leave them in the operatory. Now you're hanging on to that thing for 20 minutes. This is, this is eight minutes and it's too long. Okay, I'm getting some air in there. 
the section behind. What are we doing back there? Okay. Not really. Okay. We have an air leak. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Like this, you mean? Uh -huh. No, not happening. Okay. Let's irrigate with cold saline. Okay, bleeding has slowed down. That's nice. I'm going to put EDTA solution there. We didn't get through the EDTA cycle. And we're going to be just be finishing the preps and gauging and finishing the preps. And then we're ready to fit cones. Hypertonic saline helps clotting because it pulls the hypertonic, pulls this uh, solution out and collects uh, the clotting particles. Let's see if there's bleeding coming out of mesials. Okay, not much. Okay, I'm going to irrigate with EDTA. We're going to gauge. The bleeding from the thing. Is that the inner proximal area? Yeah, okay. Hmm? That thing's leaking. Team static. Oh, now the canals are bleeding. Team static. Yep. This is ferric sulfate. We use it at thirty percent because it ha it works really fast. Not, not working. Good. Just the tip is we're fine. Mm -hmm. I use it with these little fuzzy tips. Won't help. That's better. Okay, let's put some EDTA solution there. Uh, diode laser, really good for hemostasis. 
Okay, um, let's start with a distal buckle at 21. I need a 15K file at 21. We're going to gauge, finish if we need to, and then we're going to fit a cone. 15 is tight at 21. I'm going to get Peyton with a 10. That, that, that canal is done. Okay. Hmm? MB1. 15? DV, 21. I just finished that. Oh, sorry. MB is 10. What we found is a 15 bound at length, so we're done with the distal buckle. Here's the MB1. By the, by the pelvic cuss tip. go. Nice. Just slightly painting with that. Here's a 20. And it steps back about a half millimeter. Uh, it goes to length. I'm good. Let's see what the 30 does. If it steps back, then we've got the shape we need. Yes, it's stepping back a millimeter and a half. So the 15 is patent. Sticky rubber is not good. No, yeah, nobody likes that. Okay, um, let's check the palatal. It was a 40? Yes. Okay, and that was no, by the palatal cuss tip? Yes, palatal is a 3008. It's a 3008, so the 30 binds at length. 40 steps back. Uh, a little bit. I didn't take a 4008 in there? No. Okay. I need a 48. We have a 40. Do you have it? I have it. You have it. Okay. Did I, I didn't use it? No, I gave you that one to remove the plane. Oh, right. And our reference is pal to cuss tip? Yes. go right to length we have debris all the way down we've got a complete 08 shape there 408 in the paddle all right let's just fit a cone there for fun She's pre-cut these. <laughs> I just waste a bunch of them, sorry. Obturation is the final point of grace for a nice access. 408. Length of the palatal canal. This is long, it's a 21. So, we're going to cut it to 20, actually three quarters, here's 20, and here's 19 and a half. Okay, I need some little guys. This is an untrimmed cone for the MB1 because it's so tiny. And 
and that was finally referenced by the palatal. Our length in that canal? For the DB? MB. One. MB and Okay, so we're fit to exact length. We're going to cut that back a half. This is a 15, actually, just a little bit more than a 15. All right, we're good there. That's the MB1. Here's the DB. Instead of 20, 06 in that. We're going to go over all this, okay, you guys? Some of this may be uh, a little quick. Distal buckle. Distal buckle 21. Uh, nice crisp tug back. I'm at 20. Okay, I need a smaller cone. Not trimmed. We're at, what's the length here, 21? Yes. Cool, now we're fit at length. I'm gonna cut this back a half. Okay, that's the distal buckle. Let's go into the MB2 with some EDTA and see if we find anything better there. I can't get to length, my strategy is going to be to use a carrier. It's nice though, we're getting, uh, I think, some bleeding through that, so it's patent apically. Just because I can't get a file to length doesn't mean we're not patent. Okay, 06 file. Total impediment. Let's try an eight. I'm going to bend it. Got a little tiny kink on the end of that. I'm just wondering if maybe having that abrupt bend couldn't help us get there. Let's see if I'm in the, make sure I'm in the MB2. Nope, I'm in the MB1. Okay, not getting a file there. We're putting a carry in that one. All right, so that'll be a 20 carrier. I like plastic carriers. They're tougher than the gutta core. Gutta core will break on you sometimes.
Remember that thing I said about package designers? It's a, a separate level of hell. Okay. Our length, our uh, estimated length of that canal is? 19 and a half. 19 and a half. Okay, so this little bump here. That's 18 and a half. That's the length we want. I'm going to score this and remove a bunch of this gutta percha because it's not going to help us at all. It's going to just get in the way. We'll have to clean out of the pulp chamber. So usually cleaning eight, nine millimeters off that will really help. This goes in the oven by the handle. I'm going to heat the oven up once before we're ready to do it, use it. On a heating cycle, it'll be preheated, it'll hit top heat after that. Okay. Let's put cones in place and take a cone fit film. Here's the disc to buckle. We're doing the final part. Here's the Powell. So distal buckle goes in first, Powell second, MB last because you can see it easier along the line angle. Here's the MB1. the palatal cuss tip. Okay. Can you section? Okay. Open. Can move that back a little bit. Ah, we got a one. All right, everything's half millimeter short. We're ready to fill. The MB is actually a little close. I'm going to take another half millimeter off of that. The DB is a half. The palatal is maybe right there. I might need to cut the palatal taste too. Just a buckle. That looks great. Make sure you pinch the cone. You've got to know where that reference is. Here's the paddle. I'm going to clip that just a tiny bit. Cutting a half millimeter off of it. This is the paddle. Yep. And here's the MB. I'm going to take an another half millimeter off this guy. What's the length of the MB canal? MB is 20. It's 20? Mm -hmm. Wow. Did I hold this right? There we go. Okay. I'm a little too close to 20. I'm going to take another little quarter off. Scissors. Okay, let's start drying canals and cementing cones. 
We're going to put the MB2 in last because it carries pushed junk everywhere. So in the distal buccal canal, pretty much I'm submitting the cone, searing it off, doing a 10 second sustained condensation force, and that's it for the fill there. Okay, I'm going to grab at the reference point. There's the wet part. You measure the dry part, it's exactly 20 millimeters. What's the distal buckle? Distal Twi 21. 21? Okay, you know what? I need to dry a little bit further. If this convinces me it's 21, we're going to cut the cone back again. I don't think it is. Take a sealer next. Um, can you put a little suction on there? Bioceramics set in the presence of moisture, but they don't want too much moisture or they won't set. filled. Uh, wait a sec. I'm going to sear this off and finish condensing. Turn to the right for me. Thank you. First canal is almost done. We're going to sear this off at the orifice level. She's going to hand me a 0.9 millimeter plugger, a 90. And I'm going to hang out there for three or four seconds. This fits the orifice, which is 1.0 perfectly. And I'm going to lean. Jesse, I'm going to put some pressure on your tooth. I'm moving her head. Got to perch and move slow. So that's a more effective way than bouncing on it. And we have just the right orifice amount. OK, let's dry and cement the paddle. What size tip are these? 40? Uh, those are 80. An 80 tip? 80. No, no. Oh, no, I need, this is a, okay. this is a paddle um, canal. Uh, can I get them? Oh, 06. No, use these guys. Yes, I'm using this. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're right. They're not tip size. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take a 40. Uh huh. Nice. One more. How the length is? How little is 21. Okay, that's exactly where it's drying to. I'll take the sealer. 
This is the new Visco tip by Vista. It saves you a lot of bioceramic sealer because it doesn't eat up a bunch of it in the hub. There you go. This is fine. I'll take a the same size file. 90. 90. Yeah. So I'm not just severing it, I'm also heating the gutta percha that I'm leaving there. So being too sh short on that, that's how you pull a cone out. Pal's done. <coughs> yep. Six regular scissors. Mm Okay, sealer. Uh, actually, I'll take this one. Let's get the MB2 dried out a little bit too. No, I think the 90 will be good. Ah, it just came out. What is that all about? I get it. I'm not going to condense this until I get the carrier in the adjacent canal because I don't want to push material over there and block it, block that canal out. So let's do this little guy. Debbie, <sighs> yeah, you missed that. So I'm going to pull a stop up, grab this thing, break the handle off, and put it in. Molar's way better with a, a hemostat than with by fingers. It's like watching grass grow. <laughs> Come on. The longer heating cycle is better. You can't heat them too much. You can definitely heat them not enough. Final payment for the mesial groove paid right at the end. My friend John Cotomy told me about that concept and it took me a year of being punished by not doing it to convince me that I needed to get that little, spend the time to put that little guy in place. Okay. 
I want to heat and uh, uh, let's cut it with uh, preppy burr. Okay, so plastic carriers are highly metallized. They don't cut very easily with heat. So you need to use this little preppy burr. It's a round burr with no cutting flutes. This is 1.2 millimeters, so it perfectly. Thank you. So it perfectly uh, hubs out right, real wide. Spin it up. And just push down on the carrier at the orifice, and it will usually cut it right off. Be careful when you move this. You do not want to pull the carrier out. Ah, awesome. Okay. And here's the other reason that I prefer plastic carriers. Gutta core is uh, super messy to clean up. Right. I'll take a 0.7 for this guy. You're right. And you condense carriers just like you condense gutta percha. So we're going to give this a nice little heave ho here. And I'm going to heat the MB and let's get a down pack there. Actually, I'm going to down pack that. Could I have an 06 taper? No, I'm sorry, an 08? Oh. Yeah. So I've got the MB2 sealed. Now I've got back pressure to push again. So I'm going to have one more shot to. Uh, I need to grab the heater and turn it Then give me a 10. No. It broke. The 6? The 6 oh, broke? Yeah. That's the last one we have over here? What's this I mean, guy? It's the instrument's inside here. Oh, geez. Really? It broke off in there. Okay, that's a problem. How about this guy? Um, I don't, where are the pluggers? Don't they have bigger hubs? Okay, go get go get one. All right. So in your video, you took uh, some off the end of the carrier. In uh, this case, because yes. there's a because I have an impediment, and I want to intentionally push more of it up. Don't strip anything off, and you don't put it in over six to eight seconds. You just mm. okay. so when you have a a clear patent canal. Trimming it off, putting it in over six to eight seconds, doing the sealer exactly the way I said, that'll give you a result that looks just like you cone fit it. In this case, when you have an impediment, it's really easy. Use a little extra sealer and just bang. I have a case of a lower molar that the distal canal bent like this and split into three openings, one of which came around 160 degrees. I could, I've instrumented around the impediment, couldn't fit a cone. So I put a little extra and I put in really fast and I filled 10 millimeters of material ahead of the carrier. What were we going to ask? How do you avoid stripping um, gutta percha off your plastic carrier? Yeah, great question. How do you avoid stripping the gutta percha off the plastic carrier? Make sure you have enough sealer in the canal. The only reason you ever have gutta percha come off the carrier is because it's stuck to the gutta percha, uh, it's stuck to the denton walls. If you, so most, uh, Failures that ended on a C, they, they do an apical and they see there's nothing around the carrier at the end of the route. That's because the, you ran out of sealer. You're down, you're pushing the carrier through the canal. It's coating the canal ahead of the carrier. You run out of sealer, the gutter percha sticks, and then you take the carrier to full length, but the gutter percha doesn't move after that. Okay, so let's do the down pack in the MB1. We'll be about ready to finish this thing up. Is it 08? Yes, and a seven. I'll take a six. I'm sorry. Okay. Doesn't work? No, this thing just broke. Oh, jeez. So why do you have a different setup of a here than This is the brand new one. Oh. Yeah, it just came out. They haven't re re replaced the one. Uh, this is six. They haven't replaced the one. This is uh, nice. It's, this is the one, if you're going to buy one, you're gonna not, this is not for sale anymore. This is inductive charging, so you don't have to worry about the little contact. It's 100% uh, waterproof, so you can't hurt it uh, by disinfection. And it has better battery life. They did a good job on that, which is a little rare. Here we go, down pack. 
Just a short one. Lotus in your tree. Okay, you ready to take a radiograph? Mm -hmm. um, is the syringe operable? Let's take a radiograph while we wait for that to heat up. Do you have a 50 slugger? Okay, let's get this film and see what things, what happened up there. Let me take this out. Ah, there's the MB2. Looks like it's filled very close to length. The DB looks great. The Powell looks great. We have no backfilling voids. That's that's nice. Let's see its shallow distal view. See if we can see that MB separate. I've got a cedar puff there. Doesn't matter. Look at that. Okay, the MB is awesome. We have a bunch of cross communications. Here's the canal heading off over there. That's a home run. So let's clean things up and close it up. This young lady's probably had enough. We're going to get a 40 by 40 CT, and we'll take a close look at it after it's reconstructed. Okay, root canal's done. <laughs> Looks good. It wasn't all in vain after all. Okay, can I have alcohol? Oh, yeah, great. Backfill the MB. Oh, it's just starting to heat up. Can I have an alcohol cotton pellet? This stuff doesn't uh, wash out with water very well. Okay, the trick to using open, trick to using. You do not want to push the button when you put it in there first. at first. You want to let it warm up. It cools when it touches the tooth structure. After five seconds, you hit the syringe button. Okay. I'm going to use a 90 since this has a one millimeter orifice opening. The heat heater. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we're going to use some air abrasion. Get things all cleaned up here. This is uh, Aberdent that cr by Crystal Mark. They're the guys that actually invented air abrasion back in the day. You have to use a special mirror so you don't destroy your regular one. It's, it's front surface, so it's a little tough to see.
We have a lot of different tips. These, this is a really sophisticated unit. You can do uh, operative preps with it. This puts out much less sand because it controls it very finely. It's a big unit though, and it's about 5K, but it is awesome. Okay, glass animer. There's Voco in there, not that. Glass animer, Voco. Uh, you know what? I need to just touch this with a burr and clean off that grit. I hate seeing a little, any kind of a irregularity at the interface. I want to see things looking stunning. And the, the little sand kind of gets in there and disturbs things. Creates a little, like a silicon layer. When we get the final images, you're going to see that massive overfill on the paddle. It doesn't matter. In, three, in probably two months, it's going to be gone. It's 100% biocompatible. Okay, I'll take the vocal. So we're going to put glass ionomer on the gutta percha at the orifices. This ensures that if the tooth decays off the gub line, all you're going to have to do is restore it again. You don't have to redo the root canal. Uh, it's uh, uh, hydrophobic. That are hydrophilic. When you get the bonded composite, it's different, but if we have this basic, the base layer sealed up, that'll work out great. Uh, let's put some uh, sponge. sponge. Okay. Yeah. If we weren't running late here, I would have uh, put a dual cure restorative material in here. Then the buildup will do that on the next appointment. We're going to adjust the occlusion now. Last. What? Tempet. That's Tempet? Tempet? Yeah, they have two versions. You want the clear one? The other one doesn't set for beans. Okay, we're going to do the first adjustment with the rubber dam in place. Is that a cotton pellet you left? I do. 
Okay. Best part of every procedure. And We're going to get, get the final pictures, and we'll have you out of here. You were awesome, by the way. <laughs> Let's take those uh, conventional radiographs right now. No, don't tip her up. I want to see. I can see it better when she's back. Okay, do you have the... Uh, okay, so it's hors d'oeuvre. And beer time. It's beer 30. Back at the ranch. No cotton pellet because it, yeah, because they're short. Hold steady. Yeah, that's inner sinus space. That looks really interesting. We may have something off in the MB3 side. I'm not sure about that, but let's get a more mesial view bite there. Okay. We have to come a little bit lower. Cooling down. Open. We're going to see the most. There we go. There's a straight on view. She's got a little crack that started right here. I think it's just because she had all the missing dentin underneath the enamel. So when I do the buildup, we're going to probably remove that. This, I don't care. We're filled very tightly there. Um, we're going to see, tomorrow morning we'll see the, the CT 
and we'll be able to look at all the fills. I can hardly wait to see what the MB looks like, but we need to give our patient an awesome round of applause. Thank you for joining us for another live demonstration. We'll see you the next time. See you at the Apex.